Let's see how much pride this 80s movie has. Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay, I'm your host Connie, and today we are here with my blind reaction to Victor Victoria. This is a Pride Month special, so it is not a donation reward, uh, but it is a Pride Month special for the channel, and I'm very interested to see what this is, because I know practically nothing about this, I don't know who's in it, I have only heard of it talked about in terms of like big queer movies like this is like one of the big ones and i do know that this is based off a movie like this is like a remake of a movie from like i think the 20s um but like i said i don't know anything about this other than i think it has something to do with either a trans character or a crossdresser something like that um hence the title victor victoria um probably in reference to a change of name so i yeah i don't know what to expect from this especially with it being from the 80s uh we've reacted to another older queer movie before with uh to wong fu thanks for everything julie newmar and that movie while really good had some issues due to the time it came out there were some issues in terms of how things were represented and everything, uh, certain terms used and the ideas of certain terms and stuff. And, and obviously, it was a product of the times, but was still very progressive and did a lot for the queer community. It's not perfect by any means. It, it, like I said, it has its issues, but... The fact that it's still as beloved as it is by the queer community it says something. Now, I don't know if this movie is as beloved as stuff like that, but I've heard about it, like, talked about in queer spaces plenty. I've heard, like, when, uh, when looking up and thinking about queer movies, this is always one of those that always comes to the top of the list and everything. And it's honestly a surprise I hadn't gotten to it before. But I'm definitely interested now to see what it's like. Of course, it was also surprising I hadn't seen Brokeback Mountain before. <laughs> so it's like kind of a theme, I guess, with this year's Pride Month special. Um, Pride movies that I'm surprised I never checked out yet. <laughs> unintentional theme is unintentional, but hey. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to expect at all. Like I said, I don't know anything about this other than, I guess, base concept. And I don't even know how accurate that is. So, I'm definitely curious. I'm definitely curious to see what this is, what it's about, uh, who's in it. I wonder if I'll recognize anyone. I, I don't know if this was a big movie either. That's the thing. I don't know if this was like a noteworthy movie that came out. Or if it was like some small uh, budget thing that a lot of people didn't pay attention to. I have no clue. But we're about to find out. So before we get into this, I do want to remind you all that we have a lot of great content to check out on the channel. Between Monday and Friday every week, we have a plethora of awesome series reactions. And on Monday, we also have YouTube, or at least YouTube adjacent reactions. Pretty much anything that doesn't quite fit in to a normal series or movie reaction, whether it be shorts or specials, a mini series that just doesn't have a lot of episodes, or, you know, just YouTube videos. As long as it doesn't fit into a normal series or movie, then it's good for that slot. And speaking of movie reactions, we have those every Saturday and Sunday, just like what you're watching now. And I pre-record them during the week and upload them on the weekend just so that every day does have some level of uh, reaction content going on for it. Also, it's just easier for me to do. <laughs> We're also currently going through a couple Let's Plays on the channel. We're still getting through Spider-Man 2, but I have finished it. I have actually finished recording for it. We just have to get the rest of it uploaded. So because of that, Spider-Man 2 is every day of the week now. Um, hope you've been enjoying that. There's a lot to get through, and that will just lead us into what our next um, 
let's play in that slot will be. Meanwhile, we're also still doing Anno Mutationum every Saturday. This is a donation reward for Matthew Vasquez, and if you want to learn how to donate for a future PS5 Let's Play, go to the channel, go to the channel search and type in one search June Double Reward Month PS5. That will lead you to the correct video that will tell you everything you need to know regarding how to donate for a future PS5 Let's Play. And um, if you want to, you could also just contact me in the in, in the comments down below, on the Discord via a private message, on so other social media, whatever is the most comfortable for you, whatever uh, works best for you. Um, but all of that being said, let us get on with the reaction and see what this movie's about. So, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow link to the reaction because, yes, we do redirect all reactions on this channel. You gotta understand, YouTube's copyright system is pretty shitty. So because of that, I want to try and avoid all of the possible issues that can come up, such as a channel strike, or even worse, a channel termination. Which, the latter of which I've dealt with in the past, do not want to deal with again. And I understand you don't want to have to click all these extra links just to get to the reaction, but luckily there's only one. It's just down in the description below, you click the link, takes you right to it. I know it's still extra work, but on the plus side, this does mean that all of you, yes, every single one of you, gets to see the full, unedited reaction completely free. No paywalls, you don't have to subscribe to a Patreon, and you don't even have to sync up your own copy. You just go to the link and it's right there in its entirety. And I think that's pretty awesome because not every reaction channel can do this. Fairly so, it's completely understandable. But I do pride myself on being a channel that can give this to you, the full unedited reaction for free. Um, and especially without having to sync up your own copy. That's even better. So, yeah. Uh, let me know your thoughts on that and how you feel about getting to see it all. But, in the meantime, uh, after you watch the reaction, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades black and then fades back in... Everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will not only contain spoilers to the movie, but my general thoughts on it, stuff related to the channel maybe. You never know. You never know. And it's always worth checking out just to be safe. Um, plus, you, know, you never know what I'm going to say. Could be fun, could be crazy. I could say something out of pocket. Might be fun just to check out for that. So, uh, yeah. That being said, thank you so much as always, for tuning in. And for now, I'll see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, I looked up some stuff. I, I wanted to see, like, exactly what people thought of this, because I, I had heard positive things. I, I had heard people, like, talk about this in, like, one of the big queer films and everything. But I wanted to, like, see, like, more kind of specifics on things and everything. And from what I can tell, it seems like it's mostly positive, but there are some negative views on it. And that, I feel, is, like, pretty uh, standard with a lot of things. Let me just check something real quick here. Because there's one thing I didn't check. And that is uh, Ron Tomatoes. As I always say, take it with a grain of salt. But I do want to see what they say. Oh, it is extremely positive on Ron Tomatoes. The tomato meter gives it a 97%. And audience score is 86%. Da, 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 da. Yeah, like even one of the critical reviews, uh, Wesley Lavelle from Cinema Site, states that uh, it's one of the bright spots of 1982 and of historical pro LGBTQ cinema. And people are saying like it's a step in the right direction um, and stuff like that. It's uh, progressive for the time. Touches on uh, 
sexual attitudes and uh, challenging gender discussion and whatnot, things like that. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Yeah, stuff like that. And most of the stuff I write about it seems to view it that way as well. It's like, it's it's very nice, it's very queer friendly, it, it looks at uh, queer people in a very positive light, and which especially for the time is a good thing. And then I have read a couple reviews, I looked at a couple things, and they have had a little bit of a different story. There's a couple people who I, I, I read views and thoughts on who basically were upset that it didn't go as far as it did or as it could have and it's like they were basically saying things like oh i was disappointed that victoria didn't become victor in the end that it uh trans baited me and stuff it's like you you do realize this movie came out in 1982 right like you don't genuinely think you are going to get much with that in that from that time period, do you? Like, some older movies can touch on these topics in a lot of ways, but especially a big name movie that stars someone like Julie Andrews, it's like you're you're not gonna get as much as you would hope for. Like, would that have been awesome? Yes, of course. It would have been amazing. But I honestly never at any point expected that to happen. I always figured that by the end of the film, she would go back to being Victoria. That this, uh, th this, um, career, I guess you could say, as a, basically as a drag, drag queen, um, sort of. I'll get to that in a bit. But that this, uh, drag career would basically help her discover a lot more about herself. And it did. That's exactly what happened. And it also allowed other characters to discover a lot more about themselves and to come around in a lot of ways. Like, King, like, started out as very homophobic, but he actually started, you know, coming around to things. And it may not have been perfect, but still. And that's, that's my view on this film. It definitely wasn't perfect, obviously, for the time this came out. Um, even then, there were some things that were maybe a little stereotypical and could have been done better. But because it did come out when it did, a lot of that, I wouldn't say is forgivable, but understandable. And I honestly, compared to some other things I've seen, this was extremely well handled. It didn't deal in a lot of stereotypes. It was very, very positive and friendly. Like, any time, like, the negativity was brought up, any time, like, homophobia and stuff was brought into play, it was always shown as being bad. As being wrong. And it's, like, the, the like, one or two people who even, like, had, like, kind of these ideas that we would consider transphobic and everything were bad guys so it's like it, it makes it clear that those kind of views are wrong and it, again it very much makes a positive point about queer people that they are people who deserve to be respected and like i said let's talk about this now it was kind of a drag performance in a way because she was performing in drag in like real life by portraying a man but then her drag persona was also in drag it's it's kind of dragception <laughs> kind of comes full circle in a loop in a way uh and i thought that was actually pretty fun i don't think i've seen that kind of thing before um usually when i've seen drag performers it's just like most of the time, not always, but most of the time it's a male identifying individual dressing and performing as a woman, usually very over the top, which is the point, the idea. And that's not always the case. There are drag performers who are trans women, there are non-binary drag performers, etc., etc. Um, 
there are some uh, who are just cis women who perform as drag queens, and there are cis men who perform as drag kings. It's more about the performance and the style than actually gender. And that's always been kind of uh, a thing I've had to kind of figure out because when I came out as trans and everything, there was a part of me that looked at like drag and stuff. And it's like, is this kind of making fun of like trans people, especially trans women? Cause you know, drag queens are the most well-known and standard uh, when it comes to drag. So that was the kind of a thought that I had always had in my head since coming out. It's like, does is drag like making fun of trans women and stuff? And I, I've done a lot of thought on it, done even research on what other people think about it. And I've eventually realized it's like, no, there, there's nothing in it that's even about that. They're just having fun and performing and being silly and ridiculous and sassy. It's, it's not any kind of commentary one way or the other on trans people. Though there have been a lot of drag queens who have realized they were trans from these performances. It's actually helped with that in a lot of ways. Hell, there's even a lot of people who have just watched drag performances who have come to realize that they were trans or even queer in general in various ways through just watching these performances. It's actually very pro-queer. And that's... I, again, outside of like some things that just may not have aged the best and even at the time were a little iffy, um, for the most part, this movie is excessively pro-queer. Again, the characters aren't adhering to the, these negative stereotypes and everything. They're just fantastically written, well-acted characters who make a point of being characters like having full depth and intrigue to them, having a lot of personality and views and things that make them stand out as their own people. Like Toddy, Toddy's amazing. He's so good. Like I, I loved the performance, obviously, uh, from the from this actor, but also he was just fantastic in general james garner was great as a man kind of discovering things and learning to progress himself and then you had uh squash who was who who came out at, uh from being a closeted gay man and everything and it's just like he was just absolutely adorable he was so likable and of course julie andrews is julie andrews she was amazing um her performance was fantastic at the very beginning when like she's first on screen like kind of almost emaciated and shit like in her like really poor state i didn't realize that was her at first um it, i was kind of putting it together in my head that it kind of had to be it, it's it was becoming more and more clear that this is the main character and it's like I'm, I'm looking at her like that doesn't look like julie andrews to me but then it's like once once Toddy cut her hair and everything, she started debuting the short hair and all. It's like, oh, that is very much Julie Andrews. <laughs> I'm just, I think, used to her with short hair. <laughs> um, I don't know. But the music in this was phenomenal. The comedy was great. Like like I said in the reaction, there are parts of it that felt very Looney Tunes, very slapsticky, especially in regards to that private investigator. And... Yeah, it didn't feel completely out of place. Like, they worked it in a way where it, it, it just worked. It could have very easily felt entirely random, and especially since a lot of that didn't come in until, like, the second half of the film. But they made it work. Um, also, I do want to touch on that. The private investigator thing felt almost kind of random, it, it, it just didn't feel like it was necessary, especially since this guy's entire point was to be slapstick. Like, this guy's entire point, everything that happened to him was him basically being a victim of slapstick uh, comedy. It's like, what was the point of his character being in here? Like, what, what did he add other than, you know, the comedy? 
But it's like, even then, it's like, I felt like they could have done that another way. Honestly, that was my biggest issue with this movie. The, the private investigator stuff felt completely needless. Um, there is discussions on gender roles and stuff and how, uh, like, for example, men have it just so much better than women. Like, even nowadays, those, these are discussions that can be had. Even in 2024, it shouldn't be the case, but it is. But back in those days, it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it, even a lot more so than nowadays. Um, women were just basically second-class citizens in a lot of ways. And it's really, really upsetting that that was the case for so long of our history. And this movie kind of challenged that notion, kind of like basically said, fuck off with the idea of gender roles and that someone could be happy and make a life for themselves in spite of that. In fact, a lot of the movie just in general with the concept very felt very anti-gender role. It felt like it was trying to make a statement about those kind of ideas. And that's always something I can get behind. And I like how um, Victoria throughout the film is very in control of herself. She, she is fearless. She is fierce. She is always going to do what she wants to do. She is kind of coerced by Toddy into doing this, but she accepts it and eventually loves it. But then when she starts like getting tired of it, she makes the decision to retire, to end that career, and no one stops her because no one can. Or the part like where she's like refusing to have a relationship at a time uh, for a time with King because of his homophobia and because of his views on things and stuff, especially his view on her career and how it would look if he were in public with her as Victor. Like she said, it's she basically said, it's like, if you're not going to accept me in that way, then I'm not going to accept this relationship. And she asserted herself through this like she was absolutely a bad bitch this entire movie she was amazing in that regard she like owned herself and made sure that everyone around her respected that i mean like there's a big part in it like like um toddy's um lover opens that thing and she's just like she just decks his lights out and it's like not out of any desire to uh like prove herself necessarily but in in that moment she's defending toddy because of clearly how this relationship had gone and again throughout the entire film like she is she stands firm on who she is and who she wants to be and and it changes and that's valid your wants and needs can change as time goes on as various things come into your life and various changes happen. Changes can cause other changes and oftentimes do. It, it, it was remarkably well done. Like I said, it does have some things that I, I really wish weren't in there. There's the slur that is used that, mind you, is used in a negative context. Like I said, it's very much made clear that that's not okay, and that's a really bad thing that he was saying, but it's still it's still hard to hear someone say that anytime I watch a movie that that happens to be in. Because it's just, it's a word that just bothers me on a very, very core level. You know what I mean? But at the same time, it's like, that's just how people would talk about this kind of thing, unfortunately. And this movie, you could say, was even a little hopeful, considering it takes place in, what, the 30s or so? Um, it was a little, like, positive about how things would have actually been in the 30s in that time for, for queer people. Um, even in places like Paris, I, I just feel like it wouldn't be, like, that accepted at that time. Um outside of like certain circles and whatnot 
But that's, I mean, that's a minor issue. It's a movie. I don't expect 100% historical accuracy. So that, that's not really that big of a deal for me. Um, but in the end, it's just like this was just a good movie. It was a, it was a feel-good movie. It was an awesome movie. It had a lot of great uh, emotional stuff, a lot of great character work, amazing acting, fantastic music, and it was very pro-LGBTQ. It was so strongly pro-queer. And I love seeing that in older movies that, that are just so unabashedly for the gay people, you know? Um, I just thought this was great. Like, again, not the best, but great nonetheless. Um, but I could see some people having some issues here and there with it. Um, it it kind of depends on how, like, strict you are regarding stuff like that. How, how much that kind of stuff like might bother you and whatnot. It's it's a person by person basis, I think, for stuff like that. But for me, I really liked it. I, I none of the big stuff bothered me too much. None of the issues were like that damaging to the film, in my opinion. Um, but I'd love to hear what you think. Let me know in the comments what are your thoughts on this, and how do you think this compares to Brokeback Mountain? Uh, I I would say it's not as good as Brokeback Mountain in terms of just like how well it's made and written and all but it's definitely more fun <laughs> Brokeback Mountain was very serious this movie is not as serious um but yeah let me know your thoughts uh and this was a great addition to the Pride special now I do want to remind you all that while this is uh the last uh, movie we were planning on doing for the Pride special. There is still something coming up this month. Uh, the Pride special is not over until June is over, pretty much. So um, expect at least one more thing for that. Um, hell, you might even find out what that is this week. Hint, hint. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I, I'm, I'm going to leave it at that for now. Um, before we close this out, though, I do want to remind you all, as always, that we have a lot of great content to check out on this channel. Between Monday and Friday, we have a plethora of awesome series reactions. And on Mondays, we also do YouTube reactions, or at least YouTube adjacent. Anything that doesn't quite fit in to the standard series or movie reactions we have. And speaking of movie reactions, just like this one, we have movie reactions every Saturday and Sunday. I pre-record them during the week, but upload them on the weekend so that every day has some sort of reaction content going on for it. We also have a couple of Let's Plays currently going. Uh, we have Spider-Man 2 every single day. It used to be a couple days a week, but now we're doing it every day of the week because we need to get caught up because I finished recording it. I have no more to play. I'm, I'm done with the game. Um, so, because of that, um, I, I've moved it up to an everyday upload. So, we should get through it a lot quicker, in other words. And that will get us into our next Let's Play that'll replace it, which you gotta wait to find out what that is. Um, but we're also playing through Anno Mutationum on Saturdays. This is a donation reward Let's Play for Matthew Vasquez. And if you want to know how to donate for a future PS5 Let's Play, Go to the channel, go to the channel search, and in a single search, type in June Double Reward Month PS5. All one search. It should lead you right to the video that will tell you everything you need to know regarding how to donate for a future PS5 Let's Play. But all of that being said, thank you as always once again so, so, so much for tuning in. And for now, I'm Connie. I'm signing off. Have a very happy Pride.